Okay, let me start uh, my second uh, pre-class lecture. So the main topic is simulating heavy quarks on the lattice. So first, I discuss the motivation and difficulties uh, in simulating heavy quarks on the lattice. And then I introduce frameworks used in pra practical simulation. So heavy flame physics is interesting probe of new physics. And so uh, there should exist a new CP violation to explain a symmetry between matter and antimatter. And this new CP violation could be hidden in the light flavor and heavy flavor physics. And heavy hadrons have various CK modes, which enable us to carry out independent cast determination of CK element and other fundamental parameters. And then we can uh, check consistency among such determinations to obtain hints for new physics. And uh, uh, heavy hadrons, uh, in general, strongly coupled to mysterious Higgs sector. So they may give us hints on the origin of the new, new origin of the Higgs potential and electroweak variogenesis and so on. And actually, many new Higgs models propose uh, extension of Higgs model, Higgs sector such as the extra Higgs multiplet and composite Higgs particle. And one example is that this B2 D star uh, tau new decay. And here, the heavy bottom charm and tau lepton uh, uh, strongly coupled to, say, charged Higgs predicted by supersymmetry. And actually, there has, there has been a long distance tension between the standard model and experimental measurement in this decay rate ratio between the tau and the light lepton channel. And I will discuss this in more detail in the next pre-class lecture. So the heavy flavor physics provides a unique probe of probes of new physics, which are complementary to uh, those from light quark and lepton flavor physics. But simulating heavy quarks on the lattice is not so straightforward because this system is uh, a famous multi-scale problem. So uh, let me list the scales in QCD simulation. So first we have the hierarchical quark masses from UD quark mass to bottom mass. And the uh, top quark mass is uh, too large and uh, we can safely use perturbation theory for top physics. And the minimum distance scale is, is lattice spacing uh, leading to the UV cutoff A impact. And the largest uh, distance scale is the spatial lattice size uh, gives the uh, higher cutoff. And we also have the dynamical uh, scale of QCD, lambda QCD, but this is not so important in the following discussion. And I think the uh, ideal setup, simulation setup is like this. So the uh, largest the so largest uh, bound set pion is sufficiently smaller than the lattice size, and the Compton wave length of B quark is sufficiently larger than the uh, lattice size. And by combining these, we obtain uh, this inequality for energy scale. And I know that uh, this uh, mass scale, this mass ratio, uh, already gives rise to the factor of 40. And, uh, let us assume that uh, uh, n by times L is equal to 4 to avoid uh, finite, to control finite volume effect based on CHPT. And uh, we take the uh, large cut of twice larger than the physical bottom mass to control its critization error. Then you need very fine resolution. L over A is around, is order of 300 or even larger. And I was, I know, I also note in passing that uh, if we, we are interested in, in only for only in chaos physics, then the resolution is largely reduced by this mass factor. And uh, then let us consider computational computational cost on such fine lattices. And here I list the cost factors in hybrid Monte Carlo algorithm, which is the uh, most popular algorithm uh, to the uh, dynamical uh, QCT. So first of all, uh, cost is proportional to the uh, number of the lattice site. And we also have the, this additional factor 1 over MUD uh, by solving the simultaneous equation uh, with the quark matrix as the coefficient matrix. And uh, I assume uh, the number of the molecular dynamic steps is proportional to L over A, while this, uh, while this could depend on mildly on quark masses. And I assume 1 over MUD for auto creation. 
then by combining with these, the cost of scales like this. And if we give m by times L to four, then the, this is rather simplified as like this. And so the cost is uh, proportional to the gas spacing to the minus seven. And this figure shows that how uh, simulation cost rapidly increases toward the uh, continuum limit. And here I use uh, my favorite domain wall fermion uh, on a six Fermi box at uh, physical pion mass to accumulate 100 configurations. And uh, the currently available uh, that's cut hoy is up to four to five to five GB, and the cost for chaos physics is physics is not so high. But and the simulation cost rapidly increases if we take the last uh, cut of uh, twice larger than the physical bottom mass. And uh, it is it's currently available computer, computational resources. It is difficult to simulate QCD uh, with the physical bottom clock mass. So there are uh, two practical strategies. One is a relativistic approach, and the other is a physical field theory approach. And the first, let me discuss the relativistic approach. So in this approach, we carry out straightforward direct simulation of multi-scale QCD. So we, we use the relativistic, we use a relativistic QCD action for both light and heavy core. And with currently available that is cut off, uh, this criterization error for ch in charm physics is uh, uh, under control. So dominant of this criterization error is order A and B, and order A improvement uh, is very helpful to reduce this, this criterization error. But still, uh, with currently available computer power, it is difficult to simulate and uh, cut that cut off with A and B well, uh, below unity. So uh, currently, we have to simulate a physically small bottom clock mass uh, to control discretization errors uh, at currently available that is cut off. Then we need extrapolation of simulation result to physical bottom mass. But on the other hand, there is a good advantage uh, that the uh, normalization is simple in this relativistic approach. That normalization of that operator is simple in this relativistic approach. And this is contrast to the uh, effective field theory approach, where we need tedious matching of Lagrangian and composite operators to QCD. And here I show example for the discretization effect in practical simulation. So this figure shows the so-called actual compactor ATA1, describing the B2D star LNU semi-deputonic decays as a function of the 1 over uh, MB. Uh, so these are data obtained from JLQCD collaboration and uh, at the last cut of up to 4.5 GB and the bottom mass is limited up to 0.7 times that cut off. And sorry for this PC plot, but here a black, blue and red symbols are obtained at the smallest, medium and the largest cut off. And this green band is form factor and extrapolate to the continuum limit. So you can see that uh, at the, the, if we increase the bottom mass uh, with the last cut of fix, then in, we observe rapid growth of the uh, discretization error, particularly at the bottom cork mass around the last cut of or larger. But I also note that the discretization error is only a few percent level at reasonably small bottom cork mass. So uh, the extrapolation to the uh, continuum limit is controllable, at least for this uh, form factor. But I note that the situation depends on the choice of the last action and observable. Then let us move on to the effective field theory approach. And first, let me introduce general feature of effective field theory, EFT, and give a simple example. So in, in, an, in an EFT, if we divide the full theory's degree of freedom into relevant and irrelevant parts, and then describe physics of interest by using the relevant degree of freedom. That to that end, Lagrangian consists of the effective interactions with coefficient dictated by relevant degree of freedom. So and a famous and simple example is the Fermi theory of the beta decay. So the beta decay is mediated by the W exchange, and at low energies, at low energies, uh, we can integrate out the W boson degree of freedom, 
and obtain the wholeheadedly effective interaction with coupling uh, depending on the property of the double bottom. Then let us consider uh, describing the heavy hadron physics uh, by an EFT. So essential problem is that, that we have two uh, largely different scales. One is the typical momentum scale of heavy hadron, uh, heavy hadron and uh, heavy coke masses, which is much uh, larger than the uh, momentum scale. And then we con let us consider uh, separating the heavy and light degree of freedom and construct the low energy effective field theory uh, with right degree of freedom. And to that end, uh, Lagrangian consists of effective interactions uh, determined from heavy degree of freedom and the clock mass. In this way, uh, the EFT, constructed EFT has no explicit reference to the uh, heavy clock mass as a dynamical energy scale. So we do not need uh, that is cut off uh, significantly larger than the uh, heavy coke mass, but uh, only uh, you can use the large cutoff. It is sufficient to use a large cutoff sufficiently larger than the uh, typical momentum scale. So, and, but this kind of effective shell EFT is not unique. So first, let me introduce the so-called heavy coke effective theory, HQET. So a basic picture of heavy light meson in HQET is as follows. So first, let us consider the free heavy quark, and then put light degree of freedom, namely light quarks and the gluons, to form the heavy light meson. And since the typical momentum scale of light degree of freedom is lambda QCD, the uh, heavy shift of the heavy quark momentum uh, by the interaction with light degree of freedom is also order lambda QCD, which is much smaller than the heavy quark. Namely, the heavy coke momentum is almost unchanged uh, by the uh, interaction with the right degree of freedom. Then we can write the heavy coke momentum like this. So the, uh, the momentum from the uh, free motion uh, specified by the velocity vector and the serial momentum of all the lambda QCD uh, due to the interaction. And then by subtracting the distance, then the, we can describe the uh, dynamical motion of heavy quark by using this uh, vector, uh, velocity vector and decidual momentum. But without uh, explicit reference to the heavy quark as an uh, energy scale. So, the, uh, so the, uh, it, that means that the HQET has no reference to the heavy quark mass as an uh, energy scale. And we can uh, remove the uh, dominant uh, leading uh, MQ dependence also from heavy coke field by factoring out this uh, phase factor due to the free motion of heavy coke. And then we project that we de decompose the whole component of spinner into the particle and the antiparticle component uh, by using this projector. And I note that the, when the heavy coke mass is large, uh, this particle component uh, gives the dominant contribution, and this antiparticle component uh, gives a small correction suppressed by the 1 over m, 1 over m cube. And then the, by using the, this dominant particle component uh, as a heavy coke field, we obtain this leading order HQT Lagrangian. And here, so called heavy coke symmetry is manifest. So in the heavy coke limit, namely static limit, we have the uh, heavy quark flavor symmetry, uh, namely dynamics is unchanged against the flavor extent. And we also have the heavy quark spin symmetry, uh, namely dynamics is spin independent. And by using, by taking account of the small correction, namely that the, uh, the antiparticle component, we obtain this next leading order uh, Lagrangian. And you can see that uh, this uh, kinetic term heavy coke kinetic term breaks heavy coke flavor symmetry, and this magnetic moment interaction breaks a heavy coke spin symmetry. And also, you can also see that uh, this reading and uh, next reading of the Lagrangian uh, gives the somatic expansion in terms of the 1 over MQ. And here are some comments about HQET. So the HQT has no, uh, make no uh, reference to uh, heavy coke mass as an energy scale. So we do not need uh, condi this condition for the large cut So we can safely, we can directly simulate the physical bottom mass. 
are currently available that is cut off. And but uh, this is the effect field theory, and we need a matching of Lagrangian and the composite operators to QCD. So for each interact for each effective interaction and the composite operator has overall coefficient. Uh, and uh, this coefficient to be uh, tuned, uh, determined uh, by, say, perturbation theory to reproduce physical QCD. And uh, I note that uh, the uh, non perturbative combination of HQT have been passed by alpha collaboration. And uh, from its derivation, uh, HQT is applicable to hadrons with single heavy core without respect to the uh, details of the right degree of freedom namely the number of the balanced light of quarks and the gluon. But uh, HQT is not applicable to hadrons with multiple heavy quarks. Uh, so, but uh, the so-called non-relativistic non QCD, energy QCD is applicable to heavy heavy system. And the basic picture of heavy heavy meson uh, in energy QCD is, uh, is as follows. So the, uh, in, at the short distances inside the heavy heavy meson, uh, heavy quark pair with attractive coulomb potential predicted by perturbation theory. And in order to maintain the stable hadron size, uh, this attractive potential and non relativistic kinetic energy has to be balanced. And from this balance condition, uh, together with the uncertainty relation, we obtain, we can estimate that the velocity is order alpha s, uh, it is much smaller than unity. And then we can establish the energy QCD order counting in terms of the velocity. For example, we can um, we can uh, estimate uh, we can establish the hierarchy uh, among these three energy scales, namely heavy quark mass and heavy quark momentum and the binding energy. And we can also carry out order counting for fields and operators, and by collecting the leading terms we obtain leading order in our QCD Lagrangian like this. And you can see that, that this includes the uh, heavy quark kinetic energy, which is subleading in HQT. And this suggests that uh, it suggests the importance of kinetic energy in heavy, heavy uh, hadron physics. And uh, so the, uh, that's, so the, here are some comments. So the uh, last simulation of LNR QCD is applicable to the heavy, heavy hadrons like coconia. But again, this is effective field theory, so we need matching of Lagrangian and operator. And uh, this term uh, gives rise to the divergent or the power over MQ contribution to the LNR QCD propagators and hence matching coefficient. So uh, last QCD simulation of NRQCD cannot take the continuum limit, and we can only confirm that the results are stable against the uh, that is basic like this. And I think this is a serious disadvantage for the precision, precise, and reliable uh, QCD calculation towards the uh, new research. And the last example is the Fermi lab approach. So this, roughly speaking, this is the HQT interpretation of the conventional uh, Wilson action for light quarks. So let us consider order A improved anisotropic Wilson action for light quarks. So the, the uh, temporal and the spatial terms are distinct from each other, and we add the so-called Wilson term to solve the double problem, and so-called Clover term for the order improvement. Or to uh, remove that order A discretization error. But you can see that uh, this action shares uh, several terms with the leading and the next leading HQT Lagrange. So uh, this action uh, can be uh, interpreted as a HQT implementation of heavy quarks. And the uh, difference from HQT is the uh, choice of the relevant degree of freedom. So in HQET, we pick up the two, two component particle contribution by the whole FWT transformation. On the other hand, in the Fermi lab approach, uh, we use a slightly different uh, transformation. And the relevant degree of freedom is uh, described by four component spinner. And uh, here are some comments. So the, uh, again, this is the effective field theory. Uh, so that that we need must depend on the matching as the HQT implementation. And after that, uh, this 
semi-up approach smoothly connect light and heavy work. And in this sense, heavy-up action sometimes often uh, referred to as a relativist action of heavy quarks. But uh, and this is, in principle, this is effective field theory approach. And discretization errors scale like this. So the sum bounded function of mq times ap power of ap. And uh, the, the since the typical momentum scale of light degree of freedom is uh, lambda QCD, we can directly simulate physical bottom mass with discretization error under control. And uh, the choice of the FWT transformation is not so not unique, and we can apply the uh, order A square improvement program uh, to this approach. So we have the, a few variants uh, available for numerical simulation. So let me summarize this pre-class lecture. So here I discuss simulating heavy quarks on the lattice, and heavy flavor physics provides a good probe of new physics. At the simulating last QCD, both with light and heavy quarks is not straightforward because this system is a famous, uh, infamous uh, multi-state problem. So that it is uh, difficult to simulate uh, this uh, system with currently available computer resources. So the pra practical strategies are first uh, the relativistic approach, where uh, renormalization is simple, but we cannot simulate physical bottom mass. So the other is an effective field theory approach where uh, we can simulate uh, physical bottom mass, but we need to study as much in QCD. So at the, at, with the currently available computer power, uh, uh, these strategies uh, has their own pros and cons. But I take this situation positively. So these uh, two uh, strategies provide independent studies with very different systematics. So if we can confirm the consistency among such independent studies, we can firmly establish that QCD prediction. Okay, that's all.